Feeling the need for change is at the heart of your ability to make it happen. I'm Vivian Carrasco, and I'd like to welcome you to Turning Inward. I am your creative midwife, your teacher, and host of this podcast. Together, we're going to navigate the interior life by unearthing your personal truth, insight, and your inner knowing. In two words, this is your inner work. Well, hello there. It is so wonderful to be with you today. I am excited about our little chit-chat today. What I wanted to do is go over a recent experience I had in middle of January, January 16th through the 17, 18, 18, through the 21st. I went through a five-day experience with the community. And if you'd like to join us for it, it's not too late. It won't be live, but you'll get all the same teachings and all the same videos and everything that I sent everyone else. You can join us at www.withinuniversity.com forward slash discover. And the five-day experience is a slow drip of daily insight to bring awareness to the fact that you're smarter than you're thinking. If there is one thing that has been constant about the years of work that I've done with folks, both individually and in groups, and to be completely honest, in my own transformational changes, has been that I go back and my people go back over and over and over again to logic, to wanting to know to looking for facts, to figuring out the answer like it's a math problem. And that's just not the way that shifts in identity, changes, insights. That's just not how it works. So in this five-day experience, I lead you through the framework of my teachings. So it's a really cool little snapshot of who I am and what I teach. The premise behind it, the absolute core intention, though, is important for you to know and for you to realize, and that is that it isn't self-help. This, 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 the Turning Inward podcast is not self-help. It's not self-help because you're not broken. What's happening is it's an alchemy of knowledge, information, facts, data, that transforms into discernment and wisdom and insight an actual knowing, not knowledge, but a not knowledge that's in your head, but a knowing that is probably between your heart and your belly. It's right there in your gut, in that other brain <laughs> that we don't use enough. Or, so this is to help you exercise that muscle. I wanted to start with a couple of things. First, there's this beautiful speech that I came across and I printed it and it's very worthy of Googling. If you Google David Foster Wallace, 2005 Kenyon, K-E-N-Y-O-N, commencement address, you'll find this deliciously delightful insight into what this is. And I'm going to read a piece of this for you. Forgive me while I yawn. The really, and I'm reading this word for word out of his commencement speech, the really important kind of freedom involves attention and awareness and discipline and being able to truly care about other people and to sacrifice for them over and over in a myriad of petty, unsexy ways every day. This is real freedom. This is being educated and understanding how to think. The alternative is unconsciousness, the default setting, the rat race, the constant growing sense of having had and lost some infinite thing. I know that this stuff probably doesn't sound fun and breezy or grandly inspirational the way a commencement speech is supposed to sound. What it is, as far as I can see, is the capital T, truth, with a whole lot of rhetor rhetorical nicety stripped away. You are, of course, free to think of it how whatever you wish. 
but please don't just dismiss it as some finger-wagging Dr. Laura sermon. None of this stuff is really about morality, or religion, or dogma, or big fancy questions of life after death. The capital T truth is about life before death. It is about the real value of a real education, which has almost nothing to do with knowledge, and everything to do with simple awareness. Awareness of what is so real and essential, so hidden in plain sight all around us, all the time, that we have to keep reminding ourselves over and over, this is water, this is water. Reading it (laughs) takes my breath away. So I invite you as a positioning, sort of as a perspective building, to really dig into David's insight, because we all get lost in the intellect. It doesn't ever go away. I had a recent experience that I'll tell you in detail about on the next podcast about my most recent transformation and how just looking at myself go through it, I was doing the same thing, looking for the logic. And I knew it wasn't going to serve me. But it's part of our default setting. So like David said, we have to keep reminding ourselves over and over and over. We have to keep remembering this is water. It is simple, simple attention to what's right in front of me, to what's going on inside of me. That is turning inward. What is going on inside of me? So this isn't self-help because you're not broken. It's a training in insight. The five-day learning experience will take you through my framework of how to figure out what you really want so that you can speak your own truth and not come from a place of shoulds and A, B decisions or when I or if that scenarios. I really, 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 really invite you to, if it piques your interest, of course, if you're curious, to visit within university.com forward slash discover and take the journey with us. When we were going through our five day experience together live as a community, one of the, one of the quotes um, that really gave light to its, its name, you're smarter than you're thinking, was from Winnie the Pooh. You're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you're thinking. We are smarter than we think, than we think. But if we rely on our thinking, it's like we're dragging a club foot behind us. It's, it's like we're trying to drive a car with two wheels. It's not easy. You might get somewhere. But you won't, you know, it's not something you can sustain and it won't go on for long. So I won't go into complete detail over all five days, but I do want to just give you a tiny little insight into what I teach. The first day is about presence. Everything, in my opinion, begins with the being in your doing and the presence that you bring to it, your full and complete attention, whether it is the person who is sitting in the chair opposite you, the attention that you're giving my voice and the words that I'm saying, and how they resonate in your own heart, or if it's starting a a load of laundry, or doing the dishes. What is the presence in your doing? Because the experience can do a complete 360 depending on where your presence is. Because believe me, I have done dishes pretty pissed off. And it's not as fun as when I do dishes fully present in the task and having fun with every bit of the senses to include the way that the water feels, the way that the bubbles pop as they hit the air, you know, the touch of the sponge, the smell of clean. That's a completely different experience than when I'm angry and resentful. So 
in the first day, I will take you through a lesson on presence and how to increase the being in your doing. In the second day, I ask you to make a wish. Einstein said that imagination is more important than information. And one of the things that I believe, especially here in the Western world, that we have a deficit in is we have a deficit in imagination. One of my courses I call a workshop for the soul. Imagination is a workshop for the soul. Creativity is the spark of our inner light. And we don't often do what we need to do to unleash our wildest dreams. The really cool thing about a wild dream is that if you can dream it, there's something even wilder out there. I am blessed beyond measure and my heart literally breaks some days in gratitude in gratitude because I literally couldn't have even imagined the life that I live now a long time ago. It was outside of my realm of possibility. And if that's true for me, it's totally true for you. So on the second day, I invite you to make a wish. And I want you to make it a big, big, wild, wild dream. And to help you figure out how to do that. Because it's okay. Imagination is not easy for everyone. On the third day, I call it the great unlearning. Because we're conditioned to adjust and to fit in. And because we're human beings, what we want most, more than anything, is a sense of belonging. So very often we will do so much more than is for us in order to stay with the group, in order not to be cast out. And in some cultures, actually, and in some religions, the act of casting someone out of the community is the most severe and strictest form of punishment. And I forget which culture it was. It was an indigenous kind of tribe. When they do that, within, I think it was days or weeks that I read, those people die. They can't imagine a life without belonging. So I say that to put emphasis on the fact that anything that you do different is going to be tough, but it is the great unlearning. It is the awakening from the robot, watered-down, software, downloaded way of being that everyone, whoever everyone is, told you how you should live your life. And it's the casting off of those layers and those shells and figuring out what's true for you. And one of the stories that I've told over and over again is, you know, as a Catholic girl, it was really, really tough for me to admit to myself, first and foremost, but to both my husband and my family, that I did not enjoy being in the kitchen. Because in the deepest sense of me, I associated that I guess if I didn't want to be in the kitchen and cook and nurture my family, that I didn't really love them or something. But it was really just the conditioning of, that's what I saw growing up. Well, not so much my mom. Love you, mom. (laughs) She didn't like being in the kitchen either. But everyone else. And all the good, juicy gossip happened in the kitchen. And all the... The ass hung around in the kitchen, so it was a catch-22 for me. So day three is the great unlearning. And then we move on to day four, which is really kind of a rest day. Every We have a natural cycle of rest and play and rest and play, just like we have a day and night and a day and night and a wake and sleep, wake and sleep. So we have to honor these natural cycles in our learning too. So there are three days of learning, and the fourth day, even though I give you a lesson, I really don't give you homework. Because what I ask you to do is I ask you to look and find the progress that you've already made and install that. So if the progress was taking the leap to put your first name and your email into the website so that you could take this journey, then honor that. It's scary. 
to trust someone to teach you something. It's scary to try to learn something new. So on the fourth day, I ask you to look at your progress. And actually, productivity experts, when they look at sustainable goal setting, it's not so much about looking forward to that thing that you want and seeing the gap between where you are and where that thing is. It's more about standing in this presence of where you are and how far you've already come. So take, and this really associates with my Texas two-step, you take two steps, sometimes you just take a step back, either in learning or in rest, to just recognize where you are. And then you take those two steps forward again. It's a natural sort of dance and interplay between rest and play or activity and non-activity. So in the fifth day, the final day, I ask you to let your life speak. In order to see the new world that we're creating clearly, we have to create a new map and make our own way forward. And what happens a lot of times, and in that lesson, I, I take you through a couple of stories from teachers. Very often we hold on to our old map for too long before we're willing to let go and go a different way. So sometimes we try to force a path or a technique or a strategy, and it's really not for us. And it's not the way it's supposed to fit in to our own new world. And so in the fifth day, I just ask you to look at your own life, rounding back to where we started, paying attention to what's inside of you and what's right in front of you, and letting your life speak. So that's a quick synopsis of what the five-day experience is. And like I said, I really hope that if you didn't move through the experience with us live, as a community that you'll consider visiting within university forward slash discover and joining us there. So we'll see you then. You're listening to Vivian Carrasco with Turning Inward. I'm a mindset mentor and creative mood mife, and I'm here to help you wake up to a whole new way of being in the world.